Welcome to episode 119 of our Road to Unicum. Today I review the T-69. This is a tier 8 American medium tank in World of Tanks. And this is a very awkward tank to play for several reasons. First up, it has some of the worst silver AP penetration for any tier 8 medium. So it's only 181, which is really comparable to a lot of the tier 8 light tanks, which, you know, light tanks for a given tier tend to have the weakest weaponry, especially in terms of uh, penetration. And then if you take that in itself, that's an issue. But then you also factor in that the gun handling on this is really poor for medium tank. Medium tanks tend to have pretty good gun handling, and that's in terms of both the aim time as well as the dispersion that you get for turret and hull moving, right? That's what people call, you know, dispersion or uh, bloom. You know, when you're driving or moving, see how big that reticle blooms? It blooms just like a flower. And it makes, like, just an eternity here trying to aim in, right? It takes so long for me to aim in on a shot that I miss out damaging that bulldog before he gets up the ramp. So we're going to look at this tank in two battles. You know, obviously this all tier 8 glacier, and then we're going to look at a tier 9 fisherman's bay. And I want to talk about not only how do you play this tank, given the fact that the gun handling is so bad, but also to recognize when you're in a position of weakness versus a position of strength. Right, so there are two light tanks, both made it up the top of the ramp, and I'm not going to be able to spot them from this distance, like where the M41 Bulldog was, unless he fires first, right? In this case, our Patriot is trying to make it up the hill, which is the worst possible decision to make in a tank that is so slow, right? And as a matter of fact, our Bulldog is going to come down here, flank behind the Patriot, and then finish him off. He actually didn't need to flank behind him. Like, I, him, his coming down the ramp is actually a mistake. He's getting a little overzealous here in terms of the trying to flank. If he just waited till the E5 got up on top of that ramp, if the Bulldog is on the opposite side from the LT-432 is on the right side, my right side of that ramp, then one of them is going to have flanking fire in that E5. Okay, so... This is what I meant about recognizing when you're in a position of weakness. Now, when I was firing on the M41 Bulldog, obviously he'd been coming southeast down the ramp and he was close enough that when I fired, he spotted me. The problem is the LT-432 is playing the south side of the hill, right? What I'll often do if I go up on the hill, I'll actually shoot flanking fire into the heavy tanks that are on the A and B lanes. But as it is, that LT-432 probably doesn't have a shot. And what he's doing is really smart. He actually put you know, multiple shots into me, and thankfully I moved and then dropped from his spotting. But basically, I, I can't play the middle ridge like I would normally want to, right? The whole point of going to the E6 position or its mirror position on the other side, the F5 position, is to be able to fire along the ridge, so that would be, you know, to my right, as well as to be able to fire at their tanks that are in the southwest corner of the map. So their M41 here, he is getting too close to me, right? He's actually didn't need to be that close to try to spot me more, but he's one shot. He should not be doing what he's doing. The real threat here is the LT-432, which has an unrealistic gun depression for a pancake tank of seven degrees, right? But the the thing is, is like at a distance, if a tank is leaning over the side, they can make up for bore gun depression. It's a really common tactic. And so I don't have anything but garbage shots in the LT-432. T432, and you'll notice I never stopped driving as I was crossing the gap. Basically, what I realized I couldn't stay back over by F6 because there's nothing that I can do that's useful. And here, this IS-3A had pushed up and over the ridge, which is a very poor play to make in that tank in this situation, especially because he's just going to get dumped on by Artie. Right? He's highly exposed. I mean, I'm also in a situation where there Artie could potentially hit me, so I have to be careful. And the other thing, too, is that, you know, LT-432, the second that I peek out on this ridge, like, you might be wondering, why did I love my clip on the 3A? It's like, one, he can fire at me. Two, their Arties could fire at me. Three, their LT-432 could also fire at me, right? So you don't want to chase or force damage, especially if you're in a situation like I am where I've already lost the majority of my hit points. Okay, so that 3A obviously can, you know, he can two-shot me pretty easily. And so I don't want to stay there, especially since that LT-432 was, you know, shooting down at me. And so I'm going to flex around to another area of the map. The one good thing is the LT-432 seems to have backed off the high 
part of that hill where he was firing down on me. And so I'm coming over here. It looks like our lynx, you guys may have noticed, if you go back and watch that section with the lynx and the chimera, they were kind of doing two things that were incorrect. So one was that the lynx was just sitting on the other side of a rock, spotted by proximity by the Udez 14-5, but he stayed there, right? So he's making himself a target that's already a bull. You know, he was hanging out down around G4, and then our chimera really is playing the wrong side of that rock. That rock that he's at, the, the, the really good position is on the south side of that rock down at k5 right because it's got that magical trifecta of a bush adjacent to hard cover with a good field of view right now where he is if he's trying to get shots in the 3a that's a totally fair thing to do but earlier he could have been up there potentially spotting their isg 152 obviously you know in his shoes you don't want to be spotting that tank with your face because you know the 152 has that huge alpha gun you know and you don't want to lose a big chunk of your hit points and really partly waiting for our Artie's there because Artie's trying to fire in the 3A that one already missed, but the 3A's in a fairly exposed position on the end of their trench, right? While they're while you're in the trench, you can be somewhat safe from Artie fire depending on the angling. Now the thing is, I've lost too much of my hit points. That you know, LT432 really bled me very effectively, and so what I'm contemplating here is really not very wise, right? It's going to take me three shots to kill him. He could potentially one shot me. This really isn't a very smart play, am I? Part, especially considering that we have the lead and I don't need to get over aggressive. The smart thing when you have a lead is to just take your time. So many teams have blown leads because people kind of YOLO in assuming, oh, we got this, or if I just get one or two shots on this tank, it's going to be enough. And you know, especially with a, you know, in a situation where they have Hill and they've got an ISU 152 who's potentially going to be able to fire without being spotted, right? So he's going to get the first shot advantage with that big gun. And so, you know, what I'm going to do, the, part of the challenge here, that LT-432, you know, I need to be careful. He hasn't peaked on the northeast side of the hill down towards me. So just being patient. And really, it'd be great if our T-92 could make a play. Really, what he should do, in my, in my opinion, he should not be pushing along the lower part of that slope like he is. Because the 3A will spot him based on distance, right? But the, and he should, certainly should not stop where he is because that 152 could potentially shoot him. What I would have done if I were the T92 is head southwest about another uh, another square and a half so that he's far enough away from the 3A3A 3A doesn't have shots on him, but they could potentially spot the 152 and staying alive. Now this this E5, a couple things, this uh, E5 kind of just YOLOs into the 3A. And this is the part that I was totally not expecting. You know, the Patriot would have been spotted by this 3A based on proximity. So what I had assumed incorrectly is that Patriot would be, or sorry, the 3A would be looking at the Patriot, but instead his gun was aimed directly at me. He didn't fire. I don't know if that player went AFK. I most certainly should have died there. Maybe got one shell into him before, you know, before he, well, actually, you know, because I fired first, I guess it depends how you look at it. I could have gotten two shots into him, which may not have been enough to kill him, but, you know, it certainly would have left him one shotable when he killed me but nonetheless you know he didn't fire and one thing about having autoloaders with really poor gun handling if you are in a position where you and other people are competing for the same shot you know and you want that kill i'll often snapshot the first shot but in that case there's nobody else who's close enough to have shots on the already based on his position so i could take my sweet time aiming in and you'll you'll see me talk about this in the next battle in fisherman's bay and so, you know, it's so funny people get, some people, I should say, and to become candid, it's mostly players who are not blues or not purples, you know, complain about kill stealing in this game. If you're good at this game, you'll get plenty of kills. That's the bottom line, because you'll put yourself in positions, either because you're spotting enemies or because you're flanking them or you're paying attention. Uh, you know, no tank has someone's name written on it in terms of that's my kill, right? That's just a, it's just a silly way to think, but it's pretty commonplace. Okay, so this is a tier nine. Fisherman's Bay. Now, the, the one thing I should say about the T-69, uh, two things that are, three things that I should say that are complementary. Uh, so one, it has, uh, like a lot of American and British tanks, really good view rate. So 400 meters, which is really good for a tier eight medium. And it's got a relatively small profile compared to some of the other mediums in this game. And the camo is not great, but it's, it's okay. You know, it's 27, about 27 with the crew that I have in here. And assuming that you're using optics and have you know, full concealment trained on your crew as well as vents. Now, uh, the Centurion 7-1, who is just behind me, 
does not enjoy those advantages, right? As a matter of fact, he just ran into me there, very poor positional awareness, and I missed a shot on that Waffentrager, which is really frustrating. But here's the thing, the Centurion 7-1 should not be pushed up to where he is, because he's a big blimp, he's got terrible camo. Anytime he pokes out from behind, behind these bushes, if there's a lighter medium tank within 300 meters, they're going to spot him. His camo is that bad, right? And so you're going to watch him for most of this game kind of struggle with his position. Unfortunately, he keeps crowding me, and I'm actually in a position to be useful here, right? And that's actually a pretty sweet shot. At least got back some of that damage that I missed when the Centurion 71 bumped me. And the thing about when he bumped me, I could have had two, maybe three shots on the Waffentrager, right? And obviously, as you know, the, the Tier 9 tank destroyer, it's really important to get shots into him. But this is what I was talking about, you know, knowing when you're in a position of strength versus weakness. Where I am is actually a fairly functional position, right? I can shoot tanks that are around the middle of the map, and then I can shoot their tanks that are down along the H lane, right? And so, you know, doing some good work here, and then I can back up behind the building, right? And from this position, it's very difficult for Artie to deal damage to me. They can splash me for low amounts and stun me, but they're not going to get full-on direct hits if they are you know, south or southwest of where I am. So the Centurion, it looks like, I couldn't tell if he's going to try to reverse side scrape here, but really, you know, he should not be up this far. Where would I be in the Sent 7-1? Well, I would be further to the north, right? So the there's the building that is to the east of us, right? Behind me, there's a long building. He could be sitting at the tail end of that and side scraping behind that, and there's a row of bushes, and that at least will give him some distance. Uh, but that this side of the bush which he's on, you only play if you're confident that you can out camo and out vision the tanks that are like where their Skoda T50 is. If you if you don't know, you don't play that spot because you're going to get shot, right? And it's also totally open to Artie. Okay, and in this case here, the thing about having an auto loader, sometimes you just got to have enough confidence to sit. Like right here, see, I start to back up, and the bottom line is I'm going to eat two shots from the Skoda, right? And so instead of being hesitant and backed up, I should have just understood that I was going to eat the damage and I loaded my clip on him without moving backwards and potentially got, you know, get three shots of damage into him instead of just one. Right now, obviously, I'm not advocating trading, right? It's just that if you've already moved out into the open and they see you, right, if it's just him, it's just me and him, I should assume that he's going to damage me, which he did. He put two shells into me, but at least try to get my shots into him. Again, I want to be really careful, not encourage you guys to trade damage. That's not what this is about. I was trying to cross the gap to get where I am now, which is a really strong position both in terms of being able to fire at them as well as being able to spot their tanks right and where their Skoda is I'm close enough now if he fires and he's behind a bush that's all that there is between him and my, me I will always spot him because I'm close enough and that's you know part of the benefit of having that really good view range and I'm far enough back behind this bush I don't think that I'll get spotted if I don't fire but obviously Sometimes you'll find out you you think you're not going to get spotted, then you are, and then you just have to you know play with that in mind the rest of the way. Okay, looking at the map, it looks like that Waffle Trigger. Yeah, I just saw Slayer of his tank here, so go ahead and take this shot because really there's just some disrupt destructible. I think it's like a low brick wall, uh, but you have to pay really t close attention. Watch what ta tanks are knocking over, and also if you look at the mini map, you can see that the Waffle Trigger previously was on the east side of the buildings, which meant I could fire at him. Right now he's behind that house, so I'm not going to be able to hit him. And then their E-50 is sitting back in camp. A big mistake in the E-50. It's not a tank that, you know, it has good armor in terms of the upper hull, and if you are properly side scraping, you know, you can leverage that armor to work damage on tanks. Now granted, the turret face is flat, but it is not a large target and if you're wiggling back and forth and you're at an intermediate range of let's say 200 to 300 meters it's pretty it can be a pretty tough you know area to hit it's just what he's doing by hanging out in the back they conceded the middle of the map right and actually their Skoda should not have run from me right he should have stayed up behind these buildings uh, until the point where it looks like they're going to lose southwest, but they still haven't lost the southwest side of the map, right? It's only now that their Waffentrager is being flushed out and he's forced to move. And so, you know, I'm getting these shots in him. Remember, he should probably be dead already if that 7-1 didn't bump me. But, you know, that it will happen a lot. You have to be very careful when you're playing with people who have very poor spatial awareness. They keep bumping you and they're not aware of uh, angles of fire because people can unintentionally, intentionally, int unintentionally block you into enemy fire. Okay, in this case, just like the previous game, 
I'm being patient. So, you know, our T44 is in a good position. He can actually push east along the J lane behind the bushes and spot the E50. But at this point, you know, just being patient. We haven't won City yet, and so I don't know, you know, how that situation is playing out. Our Bulldog is kind of taking a very aggressive lane, and now he can just sit on the other side of this rock, and he should be relatively safe, right? Okay, so I got lit there. No big surprise. I'm going to go ahead and reload my clip. Partly because it's our M41 stopped. Okay, so he got picked off by the Skoda. We know where the Skoda is, so if I hadn't reloaded, you know, maybe I could have shots on him before he dips back down. This is the hardest thing about autoloaders is knowing when to refill a partial clip. You know, in this case, a little over, about half of my clip reload time would be consumed by the fact that I was still lit. So I was like, oh, I'll just go ahead since I'm lit anyway, and I don't want to poke out and get shot at by that. Skoda, you know, and the Skoda's playing a very good Alamo type of position back here. There's rocks, there's that rock with bushes on both sides of it. Now, granted, you know, he's not going to live too much longer just through, you know, force of numbers and the fact that we've got Artie. He can't sit there all day. And I was actually waiting to see if he might pop out on one side of the rock and give me something to shoot at, but, you know, that's not going to happen here. So I'm going to go down and push on this 5120 and see if I can help my team. Now, you could certainly argue I could have moved down here faster. Now, check this out. So I snapshot at that first shot. Why? Because that tank is one-shottable. And so a lot of times, and I'll do this too with a fast reloading light tank, for example, or medium tank, like let's say your tier 6 mediums or like a lot of your tier 6, tier 7 lights. I'll just go ahead and snapshot the first shot. And then while the gun is reloading... See there, I just snapshot it. Why? Because I want to get the kill. And it's okay if I miss because I know I have more shots in the clip. Now, obviously, you don't want to do that if you need every shot in that clip to be able to finish off your opponents. But your snapshotting with an autoloader with the first shot is fine because by the time the second shot is ready, you'll be more or less aimed in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts and questions on the T69. And I will see you guys soon. Take care.